Hello and welcome to Command Point. It is the fifth day of Kill Team here, and uh, we've got a special one for today. We're going to be talking about the Geller Pox Infected, and joining us today is Ryan Wilfong, who just won the U.S. Open with Geller Pox Infected, so I can't think of a better person to have on the uh, on the cast here. So, Ryan, how you doing? Oh, I'm doing splendid, my guy. Doing doing a lot of good stuff with Geller Pox, and I'm excited to talk about them. Yeah, I, I am also excited to talk about them. Uh, longtime listeners know how much I how much I love the Geller Pox myself. So uh, let's just kick us off here. Um, so let's say uh, you're for a new player who's looking at the factions in Kill Team and they're trying to pick which one they want to play. Uh, for you, an experienced Geller Pox player, how would you describe the play style of, of the team in, in kind of broad terms? Uh, a very, very angry wave um, is the best way. And you can't really stop it. Um, you can shoot it. You can put holes in it, but it's still going to hit you. Um, yeah, these guys, they got a ton of defense. Um, when they hit you, you know, they'll hit you like a couple trucks, not just one. <laughs> multiple, um, multiple trucks. <laughs> yeah, four to be exact. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, they're, they're really good. Uh, they have a bit of a lag to get to your opponent, but once they do, they're going to start beating on them. Right. And, uh, I mean, it's kind of like a big horde of zombies, like really well encapsulated in a kill team. Oh, yeah. I mean, they're just a bunch of walking, you know, kind of cliches out of horror movies. You know, you got your zombies, you got your lab monstrosities, your evil fusions, yeah, all sorts of things. Yeah, perfect. And I, I guess for you personally... Uh, with that play style in mind, like what about that appeals to you? Like, what do you find fun about about playing Geller Pox? Oh man, the, they are really one of the teams that fits my play style pretty perfectly. Um, I love having a bunch of bodies that all suck, um, <laughs> so I can kind of just send them to do whatever. And whatever they do, I'm surprised by because I expected absolutely nothing. Right. Uh, you know, so I just have a bunch of little gribbly bugs running around. Maybe they knock a few wounds off here and there, and all of a sudden they're at the game. You know, they've knocked like ten wounds off of people, and they, you know, I got to give them a round of applause. Yeah. Um. Yeah. You, know, you pair that with all the melee. I love getting into position and just getting into my opponent's stuff. I don't like sitting back and shooting people. So the fact that this this whole team has a six inch shooting range, so you're not looking to you know long shot people across the board. You're looking to get into their spaces, their personal space. And just ruin it, make it worse. Yeah, no, you know I, they got. I would actually say there's not a lot of teams that work like that, the the way the Geller Pox do, honestly. Especially when you look at the competitive teams. No, no, they're they're very unique. Their maximum range is six inches, and then some even less than that with three inches. Mm -hmm. You know, you got two hulks that can shoot. Um, they got great guns, but again, they're very limited. And you know, you've got grenades. You got a few guys who spit some some vomit for a few points of damage here and there. Uh, but you're an entirely close combat team, which is one of the first we've seen in Kill Team. For sure. At least as far as Bespoke goes. Like, I, I used to play Demons when the game came out, and so mm -hmm. Pox just yeah. looks really fun to me. And um, I, I'm considering picking them up myself, so it's cool to hear. I mean, I'm, I, I highly recommend them. If you enjoy, you know, having really tanky models, you know, they're going to eat a ton of wounds, really, you know, do a back-and-forth engagement with your opponent in terms of melee... Because these guys can they can punch, um, and you know just debuff your opponent is I think one of the key things. They're really average models. Yeah. There's nothing fancy about most of them, um, but what they do have is they bring your opponent's fancy models down into the mud with them uh, <laughs> by treating them as injured or making them lose attack dice for shooting, and then all of a sudden all your opponent's bright shiny toys are hanging out in the mud with you, except they don't have a five up field no pain. And that's where you shine. Nice. All right. So I guess uh, next question, as far as a learning curve goes, for you personally, like how long, how many games did it take for you to really start to like understand the team's play patterns and 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 kind of wrap your head around Geller Pox? So I think I have a little bit of an advantage coming from Warp Coven, which is a primarily melee team. Um, if he, it didn't take me too long to get into these guys because mm -hmm. I went from Death Guard to Warp Coven to these guys is my name. So all of it's very similar. Um, but it still is challenging because they turn one, you're basically 
the most vulnerable, which is very weird for most te- most teams in the game. They have some threats they can send out turn one or some counterplay. These guys don't. Um, so I think it probably took me about like five to six games to really feel comfortable with them mm-hmm. to where I knew what I was doing. But I think if you're used to shooting teams or teams that are a little more, I don't know, balanced, I guess, in terms of like shooting or melee, it's going to take you a while to adjust to the play style. <clears throat> okay. Because you can you can run them in and just, you know, unga bunga charge everybody in. That's easy. Yeah. But that's not going to get you the results you want if you want to play this team effectively. Um, You're just kind of rolling dice at that point. For sure. To play really effectively, you need to kind of learn them, space them out, and decide when to charge in, when to hold back, and just apply pressure. Makes sense. And uh, as far as, um, let's say, let's say I'm you're at a tournament and you're playing Geller Pox, and I'm I'm walking by and I stop for a minute and I watch your game. And it's your turn, and I watch for like a minute. What is the flashiest, coolest play that you can think of with Geller Pox that would like catch somebody's attention? Like, what what's the what's the spicy play? Uh, there's, I actually have an iconic one from Kansas City. Okay. Um, this was in my last game of Kansas City uh, versus a wonderful player. Uh, he was playing Hunter Glade, and um, at this point, we had drawn a small crowd because we were in the finals. Yeah. And uh, I had. Barged away, which is for one CP, you can leave a combat that you're in mm-hmm. and just move freely. You don't ignore models. I had barged away and charged into two wounded uh, Rust Stalkers. And then uh, with one, this is one of my Hawks, who has a 5-6 damage profile. Okay. Um, I also had online, which is Blessings of Infection. This guarantees you always get one hit with the Hawks because they all have four to five wounds. What Blessing of Infection does is on failed numerical dice of three, so if the face number is three or higher, you can turn a fail into a hit. Okay. So what this means is you can never fail your hits, at least one hit, with a Nightmare Hulk. Yes. So what I did was I ran away from one combat into a combat he didn't expect. And then I attacked one Rust Stalker, and I said, okay, I'll kill him. And he looks at me like, what do you mean you kill him? I'm like, I don't want he just he just dies. I automatically pass one. He's like, oh, okay. I spent another CP immediately after that to kill the other Rust Stalker yeah. uh, with Frightening Onslaught, which he just lets you fight again if you're in combat. Mm-hmm. So I killed two Rust Stalkers that were not expected to die um, without even rolling any dice, Amazing. which is one of the craziest things. Uh, the table is just like, what? What did he do? I don't, <laughs> I don't get it. What happened? Yeah, yeah. That's perfect. I mean, that's exactly what I'm looking for with that answer. So uh, how about matchups wise? Let's start. W- what are they good against, um, like faction wise? Is there anything in the meta that you think they're I like doing quite well against as a as just a head to head? Well, a little bit of a bias personal experience would be Hunter Glade for sure. Yeah, um, you've, you've played them quite a bit. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit, <laughs> just a little bit. Um, they're really good, in my opinion, versus elites. Um, I don't think the Intercessors have a great time versus them because they have tanky guys. I also have tanky guys. My tanky guys will just win the attrition war. Um, Legionnaires have a little bit more of a bite to them. Uh, with They have a lot more blast weapons, but they still kind of fall short mm-hmm. if, as long as you can get into a position where you didn't take too many losses. Right. Um, generally, any of the really good shooting teams still, if you're in an open board, present a challenge. Pathfinders, Vet Guard, um, still Hunter Glade in the open board, still possess a very good threat. Um, as long as those maps are open enough, it's very map dependent because you live and die by heavy terrain. Right. Um, so any team that can really shoot you apart before you can actually get to them, if there's not a lot of light terrain or sorry, heavy terrain on the board, you're going to struggle with. So would you say so they those... are better on Into the Dark than they are on Open? No. Okay. Interesting, because I've heard like both sides, and I could see the argument that they're they're good on both. Oh yeah, no, they. One of the things I do like about them is they are good on both. They're uh, if you're playing a tournament that has mixed, they're a good team to bring. Yeah, a lot of people think that you know because of the lack of heavy terrain on open boards, it's worse for you. But the trade off is a lot of the open boards, you get extra CP because there are a lot more objectives on the board. Your leader, if he's controlling objectives at the start of the turn, 
gives you extra CP. And those are really good for your team. Um, you also have a few secondaries that become a lot better, like uh, Attack Infection. Mm-hmm. The more objectives on the board, the easier one of your secondaries' Attack Infection is to score, which is just, for as long as you control an action for one AP, you can Attack Infect an objective. Yeah. Um, with a lot of the End of the Dark missions, you don't have as many objectives to do that to, and a lot of them will be heavily contested because they're right in the middle between you and your opponent. Um, and then the biggest thing is when you go into into the dark, you're often locked into the pathways you go. Mm -hmm. And so you kind of fight like little mini wars all over the board that you will win or lose, but you can't really help each other out in the open board. A lot of them, as many models as the Gillip box have, they can go all around and kind of help each other out. If, uh, if some sides failing or something needs a little more support, um, which is really important because combat support helps the hulks hit better. Um, sending some of your little vermin in just to do some damage to help somebody else do more damage somewhere along the lines is big. Mm-hmm. So and not having those walls in the way, in my experience, has really helped the Gellerpox more than just having heavy terrain to hide behind. Okay, interesting. <laughs> um, so here's an interesting one. and I have a feeling I know on some level what your answer is going to be. But uh, how do you approach turn one with this team, generically speaking? Because I think as a newer player, turn one can be kind of daunting when you're playing with a new team. Like, what am I supposed to be doing? What am I trying to set up? So how, how's your approach with Gellerpox on that first round? It gets a little tricky. Um, it depends on if you're playing open board or into the dark. Yeah. Um, the easy one I could go for is into the dark. Okay. Um, most of those maps, there's a certain threshold you can push up to where it's safe to hide behind heavy. Um, Because it's like a heavy wall outside your deployment zone and then open rooms. It's kind of how most of the dark maps go. Turn one, you really just press up against that wall and just wait to see if your opponent slips up and doing anything. A lot of times I'll keep thrice cursed on engage and I'll put them somewhere safe. So if my opponent gets a little too close, then bam, I'll whip out thrice cursed and he'll you know take a good shot. Yeah. But other than that, the team's full concealed and they just press up a little bit on Into the Dark, turn one. Mm-hmm. And I just prepare for a trap for turn two. I prepare for charge radiuses and all that. In the open board, it gets a little more um, dynamic. There's more objectives to draw into the hum to, because a lot of times you can't draw into the hum yeah. on Into the Dark, which is do a free dash towards an objective right. within six right. inches. Doors block that off normally, so you can't do that. But with the open board, it gives you a little more pregame movement, which means you can start some more charges. So maybe I'll have like one or two hulks on engage. Um, as long as I can put them in a safe spot behind like an Octarius building or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes I'll put uh, my mutants on engage. Um, that's more so just to mess with my opponent, though, because um, they start thinking, oh, man, he's got grenades. I got to watch out for that guy. Yeah. Uh, even though he doesn't really have a range to ever throw it. Yeah. Um, so- so there's a few things I like to do. I love to shove my little bugs on any vantage points I can get them to because they have fly, most of them. So I'll just send them forward on a vantage. That way they don't get blasted somewhere. I'll keep my ner- my glitchlings hanging out somewhere in- behind light cover because they have super concealed. Yep. Um, so that negates your vantage points. Um, so they have a lot more wiggle room to kind of play freely, turn one on the open board. But I always try to use one to two hulks to try to maybe... Do a counter charge if my opponent gets a little too greedy on their movement. Mm-hmm. Okay, very cool. So, uh, f- one of the last questions here: How about a like a level up tip, like a special secret saucy piece of advice that uh, normally is probably going to take somebody a few games before it clicks for them, if at all? Um, do you have anything special for us, tip wise? Um, I would say really learning how to utilize a barge. Uh, barge is one of the most technical, I don't know if I want to say technical, one of the most advantageous ploys that you have. Okay. A lot of people will just use it to charge from one point to the other, but you can also just do a normal move. Um, so one of the things I like to set up is Thrice Curse. I'll charge them into somebody turning point one, but I won't kill them because a lot of times that just leads me to get shot at the yeah. start of turning point two. Um, So then from there, if they leave that guy alone, I'll barge away. And then he has a full six inches of movement, ignoring models. 
Yeah. Uh, where he can usually get to a spot where he's going to flamer two to three guys because he's deep in your opponent's lines at that point. Um, so using barge can be a real game changer um, in terms of, you know, just really catching your opponent out where hulks end up places they should be. Okay. Very cool. Barge. So take notes, people. All right. Final question. Possibly the yes. most important question. It's the one I'm asking everybody. Do you have a favorite Christmas song? And if so, what is it? Oh, oh my. Um, <laughs> I'm not much of a Christmas guy in no. terms of, uh, like, I like Christmas, but I'm not one of the big, like, holiday cheer. Okay, okay. Ah, oh, man. I don't know. I'm getting lots of interesting answers on this one so far. Um, I want to say probably Blue Christmas. Okay. If I had to choose. Very cool, very cool. Very classic, uh, very cool. Yeah, everybody's got a different one, I've noticed. It's 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 very unique. But anyway, um, I think that pretty much wraps up our, our Geller Pox breakdown with Ryan Wilfong here. Ryan, thank you for coming on. Oh, well, thank you for having me, sir. It's always a pleasure. Of course, always, always. So for those of you listening, uh, this has been a, uh, a good one. If you're not subscribed and you're watching or listening, whichever, uh, consider giving us a subscribe on YouTube. We're approaching 7,000. And special shout out to everybody on patreon.com slash command point and our YouTube uh, member, uh, subscription members. Uh, you guys are doing us a huge favor and we appreciate you every day. And uh, no more shout outs, but this has been the fifth day of Kill Team talking about Geller Pox. And we're signing out. Peace out. Thank you.